Hello YouTube and welcome back to Subnautica. In today's tutorial we're going to be talking around power. Now power is required to generate oxygen within your base, so if I go in here, there you go, you can see that it said that we cannot generate oxygen within here, so our oxygen normally would be going down. Now currently I have a cheat activated just so for this tutorial um, I don't have to keep jumping up to the surface. But you can see the lights are off and the power at the top says zero zero and is red. Now power is required in a base not only for oxygen but also for any interior modules such as the fabricator, power cell charger, battery charger etc etc. So it's incredibly useful and it's actually very simple to get started. Now to get started what you're going to want to do is actually head over to a creek vine area such as that one over there and scan down a couple of these solar panel fragments. Now once you've got that, you're going to want to grab yourself a habitat builder, which you will have used to build your base, go to solar panels, and then just pop one down on the foundation here. And there we go, it's as simple as that. Our base now has power. There we go, so we can see in the top there that our power is going up. We currently have 5 out of 50. Now for each solar panel that you have, it has a capacity of 50 power and it only generates power during the day. Now, it has a theoretical um, power generation of 50 per minute. Now, the reason I say it's theoretical is because solar panels are dependent on how close they are to the surface and also what time of day it is. So down here is probably generating about 40 because it's middle of the day and it's under a little bit of water. Now, if you were to move much further down, into a lot deeper area, these things will become pretty useless actually. And they're also completely useless at night, as is fairly obvious. Now a solar panel will keep you going uh, in the beginning stages of the game. It will allow you to set up a fabricator, it will allow you to set up all the basic things that you need in the base. And with a couple of um, solar panels you'll be able to power, say, some power cell chargers and battery chargers without much problem. Also maybe a moon pool, um, but you'd struggle for power uh, when you dock up. For the reason that solar panels are a little bit unreliable, uh, you're going to want to start investing in another power supply. Now there are three others that you can choose from. There is the thermal plant, which generates power based on heat. And there is the bioreactor, which generates power based on biomatter, such as creep vines or um, acid mushrooms, those kind of things. And then there's the nuclear reactor, which is personally my favourite. Now the thermal plant will generate um, 50 power per minute, exactly the same as the solar panel, uh, and it can store 50 as well. The only difference with this compared to solar panels is that it has to be placed near a source of heat. Um, so that could be a geothermal vent, or that could be, um, say, the active lava zone. The next reactor is the bioreactor here, and this one can generate 5 power per minute, so it's a lot, lot less. Um, but it can store a total of 100, and basically, as long as you keep this thing full of um, biomatter, such as creep vines, if you build yourself a little creep vine farm outside with exterior grow beds, then you'll be able to keep yourself powered fairly simply. Now these um, bioreactors actually go into a multi-purpose room, which you'll have to scan down separately, and they look like this. They have an interface here, which you can put into um, creep vine samples or any other biomatter, and this will say active and your power will start going up. One thing to note with power though, this thing can store 100 power, the solar panel can store 50. Even though the solar panel is still generating power, you can see that my power at the top is not going up. That's because the power is actually individual to the different generators. So although I do have a total capacity of 150, my power won't go up just from the solar panel, so I'd have to keep both things running to get to that full 150. Now the next reactor is the nuclear reactor, and this works very similar to the bioreactor, uh, except that it takes nuclear materials. Now to use one of these, um, you're going to need to get yourself a rod, a nuclear rod, and actually put that into here, and it will generate power. To get the rods that you need to actually put into this um, reactor, you're going to need to get yourself titanium, uh, uranium, which is composed of three uroite, and also some lead, which you can just get from breaking limestone, such as the one it's telling me to do over there. Now, these nuclear reactors store the most power. This stores a total of 500 power, uh, and it also generates the most as well, with 150 per minute. 
Uh, and that's if you've got it filled up here with all four of these. Now as well as power generation, it's important to talk about actually things that consume power and how to kind of move power around. So every single tool in the game, including the um, Habitat Builder here, which I've been using, takes power. And takes power in form of batteries. And you can see here I'm currently at 99%. Now to recharge these, uh, you're going to want to go to Interior Modules here and you're going to want to get yourself a battery charger, which you do have to scan down. Now to use the battery charger, you're going to want to press R on each tool and actually unload the battery. And then it's just a case of popping the battery in there using left click. And it's got a nice interface here and you can see when your um, batteries are fully charged. So when they are, you simply just left click to take it out, go back to your tool, press R, scroll to the battery and that's it, you're done. Now there is another um, type of charger which is the power cell charger. This is for bigger machines such as the prawn suit, the cyclops and the uh, seamoth. These are incredibly slow to actually charge up your, um, your power cells. Uh, so you may want to have a few of these. Having both of these running uh, with a single power, um, power generator like the solar panel is probably a bad idea because at night time you will use up all of your power power on your base will go down and the oxygen generation will disappear as well. So just keep an eye on that and uh, make sure you've got a backup power supply such as like a bioreactor or which you can quickly check something in to um, generate more power at night. Another major drain on your power supply will be the moon pool here. Every time you dock up a seamoth or a prawn suit it's going to recharge itself from your power supply in your base. So you can see that my power is currently at 45, that's because I took the seamoth here, drove around for a bit, came back and it used up some of the power. Now although it does use power directly from the base here to charge the seamoth, what it's actually doing is charging this power cell under Welcome here. And one thing you can do with this, if you need to rapidly charge power cells for, say, the Cyclops, which normally would take a very long time using the power cell generator, what you can actually do is actually sit in the water here and just scroll through each of your power cells and uh, unload and load them as you need. This will rapidly charge your power cells uh, in the current uh, game state. Um, but be beware, this will drain the power in your base incredibly quickly, faster than anything else in the game. Possibly one of the biggest drains on your power, um, if you're playing survival, will be the water filtration machine. These things are incredibly power hungry and basically allow you to generate water and salt just from the water that's outside the base. Now if I was to leave these things running for a long time, you'll see that my power is rapidly going down. Now even though it is day outside, that single solar panel just doesn't have the capability to keep this base running even though it is sunny and it's fairly close to the surface. It takes about two solar panels each for these machines just to stay stable and not generate power, which although during the day is fine, at night time, if these, both of these things are running, it will drain the power in your base incredibly quickly. And I can simulate that by just making it night time here now. And now we have a big problem. So our water filtration machines here are no longer working, so we're not getting water. But more importantly, our power supply is down and we're no longer getting oxygen. So one thing you can do if, you're, if you don't have the cheats enabled like I do for the building, is actually just partially deconstruct these machines. Uh, they, will, they will lose their current progress, but if you're in a really bad state and you need to get your power up on your base quickly, that's the simplest way of doing it. So just remove any water, any salt from the machine, and then just tap it with um, the constructor here and it will partially deconstruct, not fully deconstruct like mine will. The last thing really to talk about power is the power transmitter. So let's say for example you built yourself a solar farm which is close to the surface generating lots of power or you've used a thermal plant uh, near a geothermal vent and you want to get the power from this area to your base. Now if I was to currently go into the base now you would see that we only have the capacity of 50 which is coming from this single power cell. Now to actually move the power you're going to need gold and titanium, both of them are pretty easy to get and what you're going to want to do is just pace these power transmitters fairly regularly and what that will do is actually move the power from these power uh, generation devices here through that and into your base. So if I now go into the base you can see I've now got the capacity of 100. 
One thing to note about these power transmitters is that they only allow 50% of the power that's being generated to actually transfer to the base. So for example, those two power um, generation devices up there are supplying me with a total of 50. But if I was to build this solar panel back here, I now get the full 50 just from that single generator. So it's, it's worth thinking about the positioning of your base and your power supply when building. That's going to be it for this tutorial. Um, I hope you've enjoyed and learned something and please leave a comment if you have any questions, like if you like, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.